All right, so this is a new blueprint that I've created. Um, this basically allows you to have light function uh, features on volumetric lights. So light functions are materials that can be applied as masks to lights in Unreal Engine. So for things like caustics, uh, cloud shadows, um, even just uh, you know more advanced animations, if you want to have, for example, uh, for example, like a ceiling fan that's spinning around, but you don't physically have geometry for it, and you want to cast a shadow through a material uh, mask on the light, you can do that. Uh, the only uh, big limitation to light functions is that they do not mask volumetric lighting. So I've created this blueprint uh, that allows you to do just that. And it gives you the features of a, a light function, um, and it actually occludes uh, volumetric lighting. So with the blueprint selected, uh, you can see that I've exposed the basic parameters for the lights. So your uh, light color, your intensity, your outer cone angle for spotlights, and then your inner cone angle, as well as your overall attenuation radius, so the distance that the light actually casts, your volumetric scattering intensity, so the amount of light that's actually injected into the volumetric fog volume, your source radius, which actually controls the um, radius of the light uh, casting source as a sphere. And this is uh, noticeable in your reflections. And then your soft source radius. So your soft source radius basically smooths out the um, edges of the reflection of that sphere in uh, reflective surfaces. Uh, your source length. So your source length uh, basically can turn your uh, source radius into a capsulized shape. It can make it longer, so you can fit it around things like uh, fluorescent ceiling lights and, and uh, tube lights and things like that. Uh, you also have the ability to toggle between a spotlight and a point light. These checkboxes here. You can have both activated at the same time if you want, but uh, I don't really make it, uh, recommend it. It doesn't make much sense to do that anyway. Another thing you can do is go down and swap out the mask texture. Um, the mask texture can be either black and white or full color, but it's going to pull from the red channel anyway. Um, so if you do have like a full color image or something like that, it'll only use the red channel as a mask. So I can go in here and swap that out for like this 0110 texture. I can go in and do it with the difference clouds, um, the Unreal logo, or back to the Epic Games logo. And then below that, I have the ability to go in and uh, uh, change all these settings. So overall tiling, right? so how many times the, text, the uh, mass texture is repeated. I can tweak the threshold. So the threshold um, basically works on uh, gradients between black and white, or if you have a full color texture, um, the gradation between the red values and the black values. So if I go in there uh, and select this difference clouds uh, texture, which has gradation between the black and whites, I can go in and uh, scrub the threshold, and that'll basically uh, make the gradation uh, more or less contrasty, which gives you a different look. I can go back in, and I can also um, add in a pan speed in the X and Y uh, directions. So I can move the uh, move the mask around. Set both of those to 0.05. You can see I get a nice little uh, rotating motion there around the uh, point lights, and then a panning motion on the uh, spotlight. And if I, you know, uh, modify the, the tiling as well, it could create a pretty cool effect. You could use this for caustics or something like that if you wanted to. Set all those back to their default. Now, another cool thing that you can do is, since this is pulling in a, a texture file, you can also use video textures. So as you can see here, I have a, uh, a mask video texture. It is full color, but it's pulling from the red channel. Now, in order to show you how that works, I have it set up in a sequencer timeline here. So if I hit play, it's going to play the video, which is a mask for this volumetric light. And you can see if I move around, it's actually uh, masking the volumetric lighting, as it should be. Now, another cool thing that I can do is I can go in and actually modify the material values in a sequencer timeline. So I'm going to activate this track. So this track is uh, going to modify the pan speed in X and Y, the threshold and the tiling over the course of this, uh, of this sequence. So if I hit play, now it's adjusting the tiling, now it's adjusting the pan speed, now it's adjusting the threshold, going back to normal, and then it's repeating itself. So as you can see, it's uh, extremely dynamic. You can control it through uh, a sequencer. You can control it through blueprints. 
Um, and you can also modify the uh, source material and the material instance to, uh, you know, uh, come up with, with anything you want to do to change it around. So um, I've just submitted this asset to the marketplace. If they approve it, it should be available uh, sometime within the next three to four weeks.